Hi, I'm Stephanie Yi from Math with Missy, and today I'm going to show you how to use coding in Desmos. Coding is super powerful because students are able to receive instant feedback on their work, and teachers are also able to really quickly see how their students are doing at a glance on the teacher dashboard. So let's get started. I'm going to go to desmos.com and in desmos.com we're going to click on browse activity. Once in there I am opening up my computation layer example that I've put together. So this is the teacher editing side of my example. A few things to note in order for you to start the computation layer. It does require some basic knowledge of coding. Um, I would say it's pretty easy to pick up. Desmos has a really good library of the codes that work in their computation layer that's pretty easy to use. A lot of coding also happens um, in your notes. So a lot of times you'll be importing notes into your slide just like that and in your notes and all of the boxes you'll notice this little like embed piece with the carrots and slash um, that's where all of your code will go in for the boxes most of the code goes into either your um, student input piece like your multiple choice select all to apply or it goes into your notes like this one here um, on the really top left is also where you will name your boxes so sometimes in your code, if you are going to name something, um, it will refer to the name of those boxes. So for example, this um, math answer box is labeled or named input for. And if you look in the code, sometimes you'll see the name of that code. Um, so right here in this note, and I, if I click into it, it says input for dot script dot correct and input for dot submitted. So it's referring back to this multiple choice, not multiple choice, um, this math answer box. Um, so if you're playing around with the code, it's okay if you don't have a really strong understanding of coding, um, but you can always go back in and if you're getting errors, you can usually figure out like where is this coming from? Um, I would just, you would look in the code and kind of see what box it's referring to. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to start with numerical input first. Um, I'll quickly walk through how it works. I'm not going to go super in depth, but if you are getting any questions um, during the video, please just leave them below um, and I will definitely try my best to answer or I'll just make another video. Um, so numerical input is really good for any short responses, um, primarily for numbers. Um, so this example, 4 plus 6 is 10. And the way this works, you have that note box, you also have the math input box. In this math input box, you have correct equals this numerical value. And I've labeled the answer here as 10. So if you're using this particular code, um, you would just need to change the answer, um, keep everything else the same, and it will work. You also have this note box here. And you don't really need to touch this note box. All it's saying is that if your answer is correct, input four is correct, and it's submitted, then it's correct will show up as a text. If it's just submitted, the correct um, function isn't met, then it'll show up as incorrect and try again. And so we can see this on the student end. So I can click preview and I'll type in 10, my correct answer, and it shows up as correct. It will also show up on the teacher end. So this is your dashboard preview. That check mark tells me on my teacher dashboard if I were to assign it to students that they got that correct. Let's say they answered 11. It would show up as incorrect for students and on the dashboard preview, it would show up as an X. Um, if I'm seeing an X on students' work, I would always tell them, make sure you're checking your feedback um, and don't move on until you get it correct. Quick note for our numerical input is if you want students to explain the answers, you can just click this. However, it will no longer show you um, the check mark in that dashboard preview because they aren't able to check that text input. You could also move this note below your input box and it will show up as the correct underneath your input box instead of on top. Um, the only 
thing to be careful of is that if you want students to explain their answers um, and you want the correct to show up underneath, that's not possible because if you notice, um, once I move this note box under my math input, it grays out, asks students to explain their answer. So if you want to ex have them explain their answers, you can't put it right underneath that math input box.